Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. On our show, we are going to be talking about iron. No, we're not talking about the newest equipment out there. What we're going to be talking about is a very important nutrient for your soils, iron. How important is it for your plants? Well, we'll discuss it on today's program. We also want to talk about finance offers that you have available for you this winter. There are a lot of different companies getting into the finance game. We'll talk about it later in the show. We've got a tough to control weed of the week on today's program, but first, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about water quality. And the main reason why is because there are a lot of non-farmers out there in the United States today who are very concerned, and rightfully so, that, hey, there's something going on with the water. We're just worried that we don't have good quality water in the United States and that farmers have something to do with that. So today we want to talk about that just a little bit and explain what farmers are doing to make sure that we have good water quality across the United States. All right, well, we're in a field on the river bottom right now as we're filming. And when you think about that, okay, so whatever happens on that field could directly impact the river if you had a big rain and you had runoff and this kind of thing. Absolutely. That's exactly why we're, we're talking about this topic and why we're in this field right now. You know, when I think about what we do for fertility on the field, what we do for crop rotation, what we do for tillage, all those things have an impact because as farmers, we know that rains are going to come. We don't know when they're going to come, but they are going to come. So we have to plan ahead. Uh, and then we have to plan ahead with what we do in the fall compared to what we do in the spring as well. So one of the big concerns that a lot of people have is that nutrients are going to move down through the soil with rainfall, and then they're going to end up in groundwater. Well, here's the good news. Many of the nutrients that farmers use today, things like phosphorus and potassium and zinc, for example, uh, they're pretty stable in the soil. They are not moving for the most part. So if a farmer applies something to the field, it's stuck there in the field until he uses it up. Now, the only exception to some of these nutrients would be if there's soil erosion. And you can see over the last 100 years in agriculture in the United States, we've had a dramatic reduction in soil erosion. So that's a good thing. But when soil moves, then some of those nutrients that are stuck to that soil can move as well. The only real nutrient that we worry much about leaching down into the soil is nitrate. And that is only a portion of the soil's nitrogen. There is ammonium nitrogen that stays bound to the soil pretty well, then there's nitrate nitrogen. But the good news is crops use a tremendous amount of nitrogen, even crops like soybeans, where a lot of people say, well, you don't have to apply nitrogen to soybeans. Um, yeah, that's true. But for every bushel of soybeans you raise, that crop needs about five to six pounds of nitrogen. So on our farm this year, we averaged over 60 bushel soybeans times five or six, you're talking 300 to 360 pounds of nitrogen we pull out of the soil. So that's a good thing. I'm just saying when a farmer does a good job raising crops, then he's removing a lot of nitrogen and it's not leaching down through the soil. Hey, the other thing you mentioned there, Brian, was just about soil erosion in general. And when you think about it for a farmer, that's his livelihood. That's his source of income is that soil. And the richest part of the soil is the topsoil. So the top few inches are the most important to the farmer. So many of the things that are being done right now, like reductions in tillage over the last generation, have made some huge differences, as, as we mentioned. The other big thing I commonly hear thrown about in the media is, oh, farmers are over applying fertilizer. <laughs> really? Have you met a farmer before? How many farmers do you find that say, you know what, just for fun, I think I'm going to waste an extra $50 an acre. Yeah, I don't think so. Farmers are some of the most conservative people on the planet. And if they can get by spending as little as possible on fertilizer, that's absolutely what they're going to do. We don't find farmers just randomly throwing on extra dollars worth of fertilizer. Farmers are more educated than ever today. They're more knowledgeable about what their crop needs. They are specifically applying certain nutrients to different areas of the field. Uh, it's an awesome thing. So I guess I just want to hopefully uh, set your fears to rest that no, we're not too worried about water quality overall in the United States from farmers over applying fertilizer or anything like that. I would say this, when you look at 
rivers and lakes and streams and everything across the country, there are water treatment plants, sewage treatment plants, and quite frankly, there are a lot of people in town who are way over applying fertilizer, well, that stuff ends up in the street, that ends up in the storm sewers right in the river. So we get a lot more concerned about what happens in the cities than we do on farms today when it comes to overall water quality. Well, water quality is certainly important and so is controlling weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? With new seed traits and chemistries entering the market, your crop protection equipment needs precision and adaptability. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies has the products to give your applications greater accuracy, less drift, and more coverage. Hypro, right on technology, right on target. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. We raise corn, beans, and then uh, about 7,500 head of hogs a year. About uh, 800 acres of beans this year. All 800 are Liberty Link this year. Our biggest weed pressure is definitely the water hemp. That's why we switched to Liberty Link. We were Roundup ready, and uh, we had some resistance. I got sprayed three times one year that didn't even come close to killing them. So the next year we switched to Liberty Link, thinking we'd switch back and forth every year, and Liberty Link performed so well we never switched back. We have a test plot that had Roundup and Liberty Link right next to each other and the Liberty Link out yielded it in the past five years. It's very important to have good weed control. For one, it just looks better to look at a nice clean field, but yield-wise, it's also very important. The Liberty Link system, a simply better solution, now backed by the Liberty Weed Control Guarantee because Liberty is simply better weed control by Bayer. For lower costs, higher production, Mantico Agri leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Avoid costly downtime with Twister's ease of maintenance. Its unique coulter suspension allows it to follow the contour of the field yet remain forgiving in rocks. Our hydraulically adjustable coulter angles mean you never leave the cab, making residue management easier, more efficient. Spring or fall, the Mantico Twister is the new leader. Check with your local dealer or visit mandicoagri.com. Technology is constantly changing the way we farm. Hypro Innovative Spray Technologies are here to keep your farm at the forefront of agricultural innovation. With spray application equipment for any scenario, Hypro is here to put you right on technology, right on target. Over the last few weeks on the show, we've been talking a lot about micronutrients. And the reason why is because so many people don't even test for micronutrients. They don't look at micronutrients on their farms. We think it is incredibly important, and don't get us wrong. I mean, we're not saying N, P, and K aren't important, but you also want to take a look at micronutrients, and today we're going to focus on iron. Well, iron is one that in many soil samples, you may, may say, well, hey, I've got plenty of iron, I'm okay. If you are, that's a good situation to be in because if you're short in iron, it isn't the cheapest micronutrient. So when you do have to put more iron out there, it's gonna cost you some money. But here's the thing, we wanna see if that's actually getting into your plant as well. So when we look at iron, we like to do a good soil analysis, as Brian was pointing out. We also like to take a plant tissue test. So what we're looking at for a soil test we're looking for roughly 20 to 40 parts per million for a good corn, soybean, or wheat soil sample. Now, it can vary depending on your crop that you're raising, so talk to your agronomist about your own recommendations. In terms of the tissue analysis, then that's going to vary based on the crop and based on the crop stage. So just take a look at whatever the lab says you've got in there, and if they say you're in the good range, too high, too low, whatever, just kind of match that up a little bit, doing some plant tissue analysis in addition to the soil test. All right, I, I'm already thinking about this. There are soybean farmers in the upper Midwest saying, oh man, I've got iron deficiency chlorosis out in my fields. I must be short in iron in those areas. And you know what? You might not be short in iron at all. Now, I know this kind of goes contrary to what you're thinking. Wait a second, I have iron deficiency in my plant. How can I not be short in iron? Well, here's what we see. Sometimes we'll pull plant tissue analysis right in those areas and see the iron levels being okay. 
Well, what's going on is iron can take on a different form when you get into high pH soils. So when you've got a pH above seven, many times that iron will be in, in one of two forms. It'll be in the ferric form or the ferrous form. And when you get into that high pH, it's in the wrong form and the plant just can't utilize it. So to solve those issues over time, we need to improve drainage in the soils most commonly. Uh, that takes care of a lot of the issue because once that pH gets down low, iron becomes in the right form that the plant can actually use. The other thing you can do is try and feed the crop for this year. Now where we're seeing good results is putting an iron chelate in the furrow. Now, there are a lot of different kinds of iron chelates out there. We've had good luck with the ortho-ortho chelates. We get iron right into the plant in the right form and then we don't see that yellowing that happens out in the fields. Now if we do that same iron foliar, we can change the look of the plant. The plant can go from yellow back to green uh, and that's good. It helps reduce stress. Many times we see the biggest yield gains though by putting it in the furrow and solving the problem up front. Well, to be more blunt, if you foliar apply after you've seen some yellow beans, you can turn them back green, but you typically don't get a yield gain. What we're trying to say is that's not going to normally give you a good return on investment. Your better return is by applying that fertilizer in furrow. But to completely solve that problem, let's face it, the soil has enough iron in many of those cases. Just get your pH down. Drainage, Darren mentioned, but also elemental sulfur. We do a lot of that on our farm to lower soil pH. Well, and the elemental sulfur thing too, it could be broadcast over the field or it could be banded right with the row. We've seen yep. guys doing the banding right with the row and having pretty good luck, especially if you're on rented ground or you say, yeah, this is the last year I'm farming this ground, but I want to have a successful crop. I can put a little bit of sulfur, save some money, don't spend a whole bunch of money out there and just influence the, the pH right around that seed zone. So iron is an incredibly important micronutrient. You want a soil test, you want to do some plant tissue analysis, but in addition, take a look at your soil pH. Make sure it's right around 7 or below, and then you're in pretty good shape. Well, regardless of pH, you need to get weeds under control. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed coming up later in the show. Looking for a solution that will grow your returns on every acre? Farmer's Edge offers the most complete package, including hardware, software, variable rate technology services, soil sampling, and unbeatable support, all for only $3.95 an acre. Grow more precisely with Farmer's Edge. To get a special offer from Farmer's Edge, visit GrowYourReturns.com. That's GrowYourReturns.com. Grow your returns for only $3.95 an acre with Farmer's Edge. Can you afford not to? Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing time. Sometimes, getting the yield you want means you need a whole new game plan. Think about it. When the older, conventional fertilizer you've been using goes head-to-head -head with tough soil conditions, they can get all tied up before they ever have a chance to score. That's when it's time to regroup. Time to send in the A-Team. Agro-Liquid isn't like other fertilizers. Their nutrient balanced products stay in the soil in the right formulations in just the right amounts. And because of AgroLiquid's unique chelation technology, you wind up using less and seeing more in your yields. So you could wind up having one heck of a championship season. Make a smart start with AgroLiquid. To find the closest nutrient coach near you, visit agroliquid.com. I would recommend Morton for many reasons, but one is that they have a long history of standing behind their buildings. Our sales experience with Morton was a nice experience. You know, they told us what it was going to cost, what it was going to be, you know, how it was going to run, and uh, it worked out really well for us. Morton has built me one heck of a nice building, and it should stand for a very, very long time. I was very happy with the workmanship. Check us out online at mortonbuildings.com. If you're looking for financing for crop inputs this year, there are a lot of options. Now, typically, 
the local bank is your best option and, and that's what we like to use. Yep. But there are some other options available from input suppliers this year. So let's start by taking a look at what companies are actually doing the funding. Well, in most cases, it's either John Deere Financial or Rabo. So even though you say, well, you know what, I want to finance some through BSF and some through Monsanto and some through Bayer. Well, here's the problem. All of those run through John Deere. So you're going to hit your credit limit at some point. And the reason why we wanted to bring this up today, you've still got plenty of time to get financing lined up before spring. But you've got a couple issues. Number one, you want to try to get the best price. And you know what? By financing early, you're going to get the best price from your supplier. Number two is just making sure you have an adequate credit line. Again, we really strongly encourage you use your local bank. But in some cases with these companies, they're offering 0% financing or prime minus one or something that your bank is unwilling to do. But with the manufacturer, they'll offer you 0% interest because there's a hook there. They want to get you using more of their products, something like that. Anyway, the point is you want to make sure that you have an adequate credit line. If you're going to be using three or four different programs all running through John Deere Financial, you better talk to John Deere Financial right now. All right, so you may say, wait a second, I, I heard this, uh, there's a hook there. And, and yeah, there is, because many companies may have a very popular product, and they want to get you also using a second or third product from the same company. Now, this isn't the case. Some of the finance offers out there, like FMCs, for example, you only have to buy one product. That's fine, but you just have to get at least $5,000 of that product. So maybe they've found, you know, the average guy's buying $4,000 of our stuff. We can get them to buy a little bit more. That would really help us out. So there, there is a reason that the companies are doing it. But I would say this, look at your program, talk with your agronomist, figure out what works best for you. And don't switch to things that you have no idea how they're going to work just because you've got cheap financing. So you still want to make the best agronomic recommendations for your farm. However, in many cases now with products that are going off patent and, and with very similar products from the same chemical families available from multiple companies, you may see, wow, I could use this pre-emerged grass herbicide from this company that has the same active ingredient as the one I've been using, but I can get this finance offer. So in those cases, yeah, it may pay for you to make the switch. Just don't take any big risks, especially when it comes to the agronomics on your farm. The big thing is to look at what are the minimums, like Darren said, with FMC, for example, the minimum is $5,000. And then what else do you have to buy? So with some companies, it might be two products or three products, something like that, at certain minimums for each one. But on our own farm, well, yes, we love working with our local bank. It's really hard to pass up a 0% finance offer from somebody else. So we've used these programs for the last several years. Why would I not when it's 0% and it's on products I'm already going to use anyway? The unfortunate part about this, and we talk to all these companies every year to say, look, we, uh, let, let's say there are certain farmers out there that already have the cash. They don't need your financing offers. Why don't you just give them a discount? Well, the companies haven't really done that yet. So you basically have a choice of use financing or nothing. I wish it was I could use financing or I get a discount, but we just don't have that option at least today with most of the companies. All right, well, there's the other side of this too, Brian, is sometimes the financing comes with a cost to you that's a little bit hidden of, hey, you can have this 0% financing offer, but you're giving up your early cash discount. Make sure that you figure those out so you see what the true cost of that money is. Because if you're giving up a pretty sizable early cash discount, well, that financing offer may not be worth it. All right, so again, Monsanto's got an offer this year. So does Bayer, so does BSF, so does FMC. Uh, I believe Syngenta has something too. Uh, Dow, theirs is going to run through Rabo. And I think, at least at this point, it looks like Dow is the only one that's running their stuff through Rabo. Again, we just really encourage you, talk to your ag input supplier or suppliers and see what all their different options are, what all the catches are, and kind of work that through because it's very possible that instead of lining up all the financing you need through your local bank this year, you're going to take advantage of some of these finance offers from different suppliers. And you may use some of the products that you buy through the finance offers to stop our Weed of the Week. We'll show you which products might work best coming up next. The Weed of the Week is sponsored by the Enlist Weed Control System from Dow AgroSciences, a new herbicide and trait system that will build on glyphosate. Farming isn't just in the land, it's in you. 
take control of weeds like never before. Enlist builds on the Roundup Ready system, combining proven control of a new 2,4-D and glyphosate in Enlist Dual Herbicide. Protect what matters without changing the way you farm. Talk to your seed or crop protection supplier today. Weed of the Week is Western Salsify, also known as Goat's Beard. All right, I don't know if that means anything to you, but to me, it looks like a very large dandelion, except for one thing. It is a biennial plant. The leaves on it look like a grass. So the first year, it looks like this big clump of grass growing in a roadside ditch or in a pasture. And then the next year, uh, it bolts, and all of a sudden, it's got this great big dandelion-like head on it with all the seeds. All right, the big problem here is, like Darren said, it's a biennial, so it's gonna be a little tougher than a normal annual weed, but the good news is you've got two years to get it under control. So how you wanna start and where we see this commonly is out in pastures, roadside ditches, that kind of thing. Generally speaking, I like 2,4-D or dicamba. That's gonna do a fairly decent job. Certainly, you could throw in some Tordon. That would really help give you a little extra residual. But if you hit it with a strong rate of dicamba or 2,4-D, you're pretty much gonna wipe this out in the non-crop areas. Well, certainly in crops where dicamba can be used, that would be our number one option. Uh, so like in corn, for example, post-emerge, I like status. That would be the best product to try and knock it out there if it crept into a cornfield. Pre-emerge, we really like verdict. If you can get Verdict out there, you've got the Sharpen in there that has a nice burn down on Western Salsify. Yeah, turning to soybeans, you can use Sharpen, you just can't use much Sharpen in front of soybeans or you have to worry about crop injury. So well, what I'd rather- you can mix it with Roundup or with yes. Liberty if you had Roundup or Liberty Tolerant Soybeans. And if yep. you go with the strong rate of one of those two products, yeah, you could mix in the Sharpen and the burn down or the Verdict yep. uh, and, and give it an extra kick. My preference would be to go to Extend or Liberty Beans, uh, but yes, Roundup can do a pretty good job too as long as this weed is small. All right, and in wheat, we really like sharpened down, followed by husky post-emerge. Well, that's it for our Weed of the Week Western Salsify, but stay tuned, Iron Talk is coming up next. There are trillions of hardworking microbes right beneath your feet. Today, Monsanto BioAg is harnessing the power of microbes, creating microscopic farmhands that help plants access nutrients, enhance root and shoot growth, and handle stressful conditions throughout the season, protecting and maximizing your yield potential. We're turning 500 trillion microbes into 500 trillion new farmhands, ready for work. Nature, it's powerful technology. When you think about it, productivity starts at planting. So it's time to rethink how productive your planter can be. We did with the new Case IH 2000 Series Early Riser Planter. We rethought your row unit so it's tougher, more accurate. We rethought your meter, took the most precise technology, factory installed it. We rethought every inch of the Case IH Early Riser Planter to make it the most productive planter around. And if you think about it, that's exactly what you want. The ease of use on the Spartan is pretty simple. I can hook this up in five minutes. Anybody that runs a chopper that chops any sort of sorghum, cane silage, anything like that, anything that is tough that ever goes down, Spartan is the best thing that we have found and we've been looking for something like this for over 15 years and it blew me away. Oh, Ed, what are we presenting? That Credenz soybeans are designed using smart genetics. Look, state-of-the-art breeding advances the best germplasm. Plus, tailored varieties for any field conditions with choice in herbicide-tolerant traits. And Credenz soybeans come back by Bayer's ongoing innovation. Want increased yields and ROI? Plant the smarter soybean. Talk to an authorized Credenz retailer or discover the right Credenz variety at credenz.bear.us. Always read and follow label instructions. We moved away from Roundup, you know, and we moved into Liberty. We were probably some of the first ones to do that here. 
And then people would ask, how come your beans look so good? How come they're clean? Well, you know, I guess you can blame Stein for that, you know, Liberty. Uh, it's a good product. And my beans yields have been growing every year that I've been planning the Liberty program. Uh, Liberty has been awesome for us. I choose Stein because Stein has yield. A farmer's attention to detail is what makes the difference. You take the time for service management because you know how vital it is to your operation. You service your field like everything else because soil sampling makes all the difference and gets the results you want. Download the app Soil Test Pro and start grid sampling today. Keep your farm growing strong. The more you test, the more you know. Stop coring your bins with the AgriDry Gravity Grain Spreader. Traditional bin filling systems create uneven concentrations of grain and fine particulates. Uniform grain distribution allows even airflow throughout the entire bin, giving you more control over temperature and moisture content, increasing your grain quality and bottom line. Call us today for more information. Dried load store, one eight five five Agri Drive. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect only from Case IH. Center Pivot Irrigation is great. Giving your crop the water that it needs when it needs it can be a big asset for your farm. However, that asset is getting even better with new technology. I'll explain in today's Iron Talk. As you look across your fields, think of the variability that exists. There are different soil types, areas that are poorly drained, slopes to consider, even different crops that may be on one part of the field versus the other. Finally, these areas can be irrigated with just the right amount of water for each. Variable rate irrigation is now a reality. Ranky, for example, has the capability of using multiple irrigation prescriptions on each of your pivots, so you can adjust for these variations right out in your field. Best of all, these prescriptions can be changed throughout the season as needed, so you can adjust on the fly with the latest satellite imagery. Or make a change based on a crop stage or crop protection application. There are several ways to set up prescriptions for a field. You can control pie-shaped areas or utilize a zone-based approach with dozens of individually managed zones, all under one single pivot. Images can be uploaded to designate the areas where larger or smaller amounts of water are needed. When fertigating, this could provide a way to optimize an in-season nitrogen application as well. The possibilities are great. Variable rate irrigation is just one of many tools that are out there right now to get more efficient with your center pivot operation. Controls on your cell phone, groundwater monitoring, and weather stations are cool things being used widely to manage water. Technology is moving fast in business today, and few professions are adopting it quicker than agriculture. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. On your farm, you need speed and year-round effectiveness in your tillage program. The Quick Till from Norwood Sales allows you to move quickly through your fields, maximizing time and improving yield. Constructed of heavy-duty materials, the Quick Till is ideal for both spring and fall applications, from preparing a healthy seed bed early in the season to breaking up corn residue after harvest. For more information about how a Quick Till can improve fields on your farm, call Norwood Sales today. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to tune in to the Ag PhD radio show. You'll find us each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We have another Farm Basics Weed of the Week Iron Talk and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Crop residues from previous crops are highly beneficial to our soils and the environment. As residues break down naturally in the soil, they release nutrients for future crops, but can also become organic matter in the soil, providing nutrient and water holding capacity and a home for soil microbes. Visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org to learn how farmers manage crop residues.